The first thing that probably came into your head was why does he have a projector on the table? Well, this is a review of this, the Optima GT1080. Now this isn't the Darby version which has the two 16 watt speakers, but this one does have speakers in it anyway and is basically a pretty awesome projector that is mostly aimed at gamers and uh, generally the professionals who need a 1080p projector with pretty decent response times. Now to clarify, right at the start, they claim that this projector itself has a 14 millisecond input latency from you clicking a button to having it appear on the screen. Now that's actually really very impressive, especially considering that most input latencies when you're talking about gaming monitors are still about 10 milliseconds or so, so this really isn't that much slower. Now turn on time, as you can see hopefully here, is still fairly long. I think you're probably talking about 30 seconds for it to actually turn itself on and warm up as such. And when it does warm up, by the way, it uses about 230 watts of electricity, so it is a fairly power hungry uh, unit compared to what is uh, most displays. You're running, you know, 60 to maybe 100 watts for a standard uh, actual display itself. So do bear that one in mind. And of course, you need a very clean, very white wall, especially not one that is textured like this to play it on and is very free and available to. So there are a few downsides. Now onto the good stuff. This comes with two ACMI ports, one of which the main one is MHL compatible. So if you want to use your, uh, I think, Samsung smartphone, then you can have that sort of streamed up to the projector. It's a full 1080p display, which is very nice. Also has a audio out as well. So uh, if you don't want to use the included speaker, it's actually pretty good. It's actually front facing. So it means that it actually bounces the sound off the wall and actually it's really pretty good. It sounds very much like the sound is coming from the non-existent sound bar or TV screen that is there. It's not the best quality ever and you know there's very little bass to it and stuff like that. So you know I wouldn't necessarily recommend just this for your perfect movie theater experience but it is still pretty impressive if you just want to play a few games and not worry too much about the sound. Now, of course, me being me, I had to take a little look inside, and it actually looks like most of the space is taken up by the power supply. Of course, this, especially with the high power LED and the digital light processing area over here, which does actually get quite hot, it's obviously, as I said, drawing about 230 watts, so that's pretty high amperage. Uh, so it is uh, something to bear in mind that most of the space and most of the weight in here actually is just taken up by the power supply. Now one thing I'd actually really like to see is someone like uh, Optima partnering with someone like Zotac and basically building one of those uh, Z-Box uh, you know, uh, Magnus EN1060 systems into the bottom or something of one of these projectors. That way you would have a full gaming system that just needs power uh, and you can obviously have uh, you know uh, an Xbox receiver built into it and stuff like that. And I think that would be a really, really impressive uh, bit of kit and I'd love to see that but nonetheless uh, this is uh, what we've got so far and for my testing I was using a 980 Ti based system this one was actually uh, the projector was a little bit louder than the entire system just because of how hot it gets but it wasn't uh, overly distracting I would say that you would want to sit relatively far away from the projector itself a to get the best viewing experience and to get the best overall audio experience but nonetheless it wasn't uh, too distracting and pretty awesome so onto the experience with using the projector. The remote that comes with it is actually kind of interesting. It lights up, which uh, again, interesting. I don't really know why it does this, maybe so you can use it in the dark a little bit easier, but it is actually very useful uh, and there's a lot of features on here that are a little bit more difficult to get to if you're trying to use the uh, sort of on projector buttons, but you can still navigate the menu system relatively easily and there are a decent number of settings, including color temperature and stuff like that that you can play with as well as obviously the keystone which allows you to straighten up the image. Making use of the projector in more real world scenarios, especially stuff like uh, browsing the web and watching YouTube videos and films, it was certainly pretty good. Now, this projector can do a total of 100 inches across the wall, and you especially want a flat white wall, whereas this one is cream and is also a little bit textured. So it's not the, the perfect experience, and I don't have the you know pristine viewing area to, to be able to really give this a, a clean break, but I was very impressed with the overall image quality, especially in its sharpness once you focus it using the little sort of tab at the top. And I was very impressed with the basic sound quality that comes from this one, and you can go for the slightly more expensive newer Darby version with better speakers as well, so that's pretty cool. Now for the big one, 
gaming. Is it any good? Well, I tried GTA 5 on it and I was actually really blown away by how much of an enjoyable experience it is. Being able to play GTA 5 on a big screen, especially, you know, something that can be up to 100 inches, is really just utterly fantastic. The fact that it's still 1080p doesn't really matter too much when you have a little bit of sort of granularity in the wall itself and stuff like that, but nonetheless, uh, the fact that it was so short throw and the input latency was so just utterly brilliant that I really didn't notice any difference between playing playing it on my standard, uh, you know, a standard 60 hertz display versus a standard 60 hertz projector. So very, very impressive there. Now you may be thinking, hey, GTA 5 doesn't need fast response times. You can play it on a pretty old, pretty uh, NAF monitor uh, and that would be right. So you really don't need fast response times for that. So I also tried Rocket League. Now Rocket League isn't CSGO that you need, you know, ridiculously fast response times for, you know, your flick shots and stuff like that, but it is still relatively fast paced. Obviously it's more of of a competitive game than say GTA 5 and of course uh, it still does require relatively fast response times so for me I was really really impressed with this uh, I did have a few issues with Wi-Fi connectivity up here which should hopefully be solved by this which uh, I'm gonna do a video on very shortly but nonetheless uh, the actual gaming experience with a projector was really very impressive uh, especially on Rocket League where besides the Wi-Fi troubles the overall gameplay experience was pretty brilliant so do I recommend this projector well if you have a 100 inches or maybe slightly less of free space and about five to six hundred pounds of cash to spend on it and of course a way to mount it as well then hell yeah it is amazing it's a fantastic gaming experience it is true 1080p it's 60 hertz the response times are absolutely brilliant and while you won't be playing your competitive csgo matches on this uh, or maybe even stuff like league of legends or uh, whatever this is a brilliant just relaxation kind of device where you can chill play some gta or watch some netflix Netflix, uh, and just have a, a brilliant time and while the speakers aren't perfect on this and I would recommend getting some sort of soundbar solution or you know a, a better sound system for it uh, it is still uh, overall pretty decent and connected to a relatively nice uh, PC then I think you would very very much enjoy it. Now before your gobs can fully drop at that £600 price tag do bear in mind that stuff like the ASUS 240Hz uh, PG258Q that one is about £500 I think at the time of filming anyway so you know while it's not necessarily comparable and but both of them are 1080p obviously the 240 hertz one is well 240 hertz and g-sync whereas this is well no sync and obviously 60 hertz but this is a portable with actually quite a nice carrying bag projector obviously it shows up to a hundred inch screen has speakers in it and there's just that just bear in mind that there is some functionality differences between the two but they are relatively comparable in that they're both 1080p and they're both relatively expensive but both semi gaming products obviously one more than the other but nonetheless i just wanted to draw your comparison to the two so that the uh, 600 pound price tag on this isn't necessarily too blown out of proportion. So what's the scoring here? Well for me if you compare this to gaming projectors like the Acer one I think that was a few thousand pounds so this is a pretty great value money if you compare it to that. If you compare it to standard 1080p monitors then of course this is not your budget friendly option and if you compare it to say a uh, standard sort of TV 1080p or even uh, now 4k TVs in the 40 50 inch range of course you're not getting exactly the same size but but you're also getting significantly higher input latency and general latency so maybe that's something to, to compare to. In terms of performance it has to be a 5 with functionality I think going to be a 4. The fan is fairly loud obviously power consumption is also fairly high and the menu could do with a little bit of refining uh, as well as also in terms of style I think maybe a 4.5 with a 4.5 for the Tetrium BB score and a gold award. It's a really impressive device and if you have £600 and a rather large wall to spare then I do fairly highly recommend it. If you want to know any more about this projector or take a look at the price when and where you watch this, take a look at the links in the description down below. I'll also leave some Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate links down there as well, so if you want to support me and keep me making these videos on a full-time basis, then please do use those links when you're buying anything. I'd also appreciate it if you use the merchandise link in there as well. There's some just general tech team GB stuff and generally funny uh, sort of tech joke stuff, so feel free to take a look at those too. I'd also appreciate it if you follow me on Facebook and Twitter, of course subscribe, uh, and if you did enjoy the video feel free to let me know in the comments if you didn't enjoy the video i see a lot of people disliking but very few people leaving comments to say why they disliked so if you do dislike the video or the product or really anything let me know in the comments down below as i'd really love to hear your feedback as i can't improve if you don't tell me so please do that and otherwise uh, that's kind of it so at least some other videos over here for you and of course the subscribe button probably over this side somewhere uh, and we'll see you all in the next video